What do DJs, portable churches, and small concert promoters all have in common? Number one, they want their shows to, to sound amazing, no matter if it's a wedding reception or a new sermon series. But they also probably got a pair of main speakers, a pair of sticks to put them on, and a pair of subs. So even though that feels like a pretty simple setup, there's actually a ton of variables that go into play. How high do you put them in the air? Uh, I've got a wide audience. Can just these two speakers cover it? Are people going to be able to hear in the back if I have a deep audience? Uh, should I do a left-right sub or a center sub array? Um, it gets confusing real fast. Today, I'm going to give you my four-part framework for selecting the right speaker, putting it in the right spot, aiming it in the right place, and making sure it's at the right level. If you check all four of those boxes, you set your mix, your DJ session, whatever, up for success. And so my name is Michael, and I love helping you get the most out of your sound system. And I'm very excited to share with you uh, the, this four-part framework today. But before we jump in, I think a resource that'd be really helpful for you is my audio math survival spreadsheet. It can be found in my audio toolkit at producedbymkc.com slash audio toolkit. It's got a ton of great calculations that all you gotta do is enter in some numbers. It'll give you the values that you need. And we're gonna be using it today to determine the exact placement for the speakers to get the most out of our given audience size. Okay, so let's jump into the main segment. Crystal clear sound is desirable at your event, no matter what's happening. It could be a dance reception or a new sermon series, and we wanna make sure it sounds great everywhere. So we need to make sure we have the right speakers in the right place, aimed it properly at the right levels. So let's do a flyby of those four, four variables, and then we're gonna jump into an actual 3D prediction software and look at this in slow motion and illustrate what's happening for, for what I feel like is a common show setup for any of these categories of people, whether you're a DJ running sound at your church or doing a pop-up neighborhood concert. So number one is choosing the right speaker. This is usually up to budget, Availability, and is this something you already have? One of my favorites for this type of scenario is the QSC K12 or the K12.2, its new newest version. It's just a workhorse. It's it's a, it's a thousand bucks, so it's like your Honda Civic pricing. It's not super cheap. It's not crazy expensive. Uh, it is a 75 degree speaker, and that will get to know a little bit more what that means, but it's, it's coverage. It's, it's, it's not super narrow like a sniper rifle. It's not crazy wide like a shotgun. It's just a good middle of the road that can be used for a lot of applications, a floor monitor, whatever. So if I'm choosing this type of scenario, that's the type of speaker that comes to mind. In my book, it's self-powered so you don't have to worry about amps and that kind of stuff. So that is a good all around speaker to have in this type of environment. We need to make sure it's in the right place. So this is gonna be affected by the stage placement. We can't get speakers on stands on top of the stage. We sometimes are able to fly speakers. Uh, you may want certain walkways between the stage and your speakers so people can pass through. Um, how high can you get the speaker stand? Are you in a room with like a really low ceiling? Can you get it up high? And we'll learn later that that's a pretty advantageous thing to have some trim height or speaker height available to you. So those are all the variables we're thinking of when I can, where can I put the speakers? We definitely want them in front of the stage so we don't get feedback, but we want them so close to the audience that someone is you know right here with the speaker. So we have to play with that a little bit to find the optimal placement. And we'll step through all this in slow motion in the file and a little bit. And then we think about right aiming. So we, we you know we could put a speaker in front of a bunch of people, but where exactly do we aim it? So a speaker uh, at the very center of its coverage is where it's loudest. And as you move off axis or off to the edge of it, the high end gets softer. And, and we want to make sure that we aim the loudest part through the middle of our audience so the most amount of people can get it. But if you got two speakers, do you want them overlapping? Do you want them to subdivide? And we'll, we'll talk about those options here in a little bit. And that's not just horizontal aiming, that's also vertical aiming. If you are able to get it flown up in the air or your speaker has variable tilt, we, uh, we usually want to end up pointing that at the back row in this type of situation. And then the right levels. And so that's not just about SPL, or like the total loudness for everyone in the room, but even tonality, because we want to make sure that someone's experiencing, you know, they're right in the front row next to the subs, they're getting hit in the chest a lot. But if the two main speakers are way out wide, if they're in the front row, they're not getting any top end. So all they're hearing is the bass player at that point, which is, or the kick drum. And that's not a lot of fun. So we want to make sure there's even tonality for everyone across the room in, in addition, just to make sure that actually 
actual show is the right level. A, a wedding reception should feel lively and full and bump and be fun. If you're running sound for a funeral, uh, it does not have to have a ton of bass in it, right, for walk-in music. So, uh, so all of these four added up give you the opportunity to have a great mix, a great DJ set uh, for your event. So you always can't, you can't always control the musicians if you're running sound for a band, um, but you, you, you do have control over your sound system within the given show scope. So the overall ethos that I like to use when thinking about this is actually uh, an unlikely place. It's a serenity prayer. This is used a lot in 12-step programs and, and other spiritual environments. So um, it's, God, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, courage to change the things I can, and wisdom to know the difference. So, so I help the rest of today's video gives you the wisdom to know the difference between in sound system set up no matter how scrappy you need to be, the, the, the difference between what you can change and what you can't change about what's going on. Okay, so let's ask what aspects of our setup will inform how we use the gear we currently have or need to purchase. So let's jump into our 3D prediction software and talk about placement and aim and our show scope. So here we are in Map 3 d This is made by Meyer Sound. Uh, I mentioned earlier a pair of QSC speakers, which are 75 degrees. The speakers that we are going to use today are actually 80 degrees, so just a little bit wider. And then we have a pair of subs right here in the middle, and we'll talk about a left-right setup as well. So again, this is a small concert, a DJ set, a portable church setup. Uh, these speakers are fl you know, floating in the air right now by assuming they are on sticks. They're about nine feet in the air. This stage, if you look down from a top-down view, is 24 by 16. The audience is 10 feet from the front of the stage and the total audience is 60 feet deep by 76 feet wide, so just a little bit wider than a square. And for all the predictions that we're going to see in just a minute, this little blue rectangle will show us a weather map of what's going on, as you can see right here. But that weather map is saying, hey, what at this given frequency, aka 4 kilohertz, so if you have no idea what 4K is, basically the top end of the speaker where we find the clarity and detail in the speaker, what level is that going to be at at standing height? So I'm assuming there is a standing audience and how loud is it going to be for this guy who's standing in the very front row versus this guy standing in the very back versus this girl here right in front of the set. So we'll walk through all that. And as we see here, an 80 degree speaker, we can look at our weather map and the top is zero dB, and we go down from there all the way to negative 18. So we have an 18 decibel span. We can look at our graph here on the side, and that shows us the key to our weather map here. So the red is all the way up at what would be zero dB, and we fall down from there. So that's our reference. So if we, this is the only speaker that's on right now, and we're standing over here on the side, this speaker has no chance of covering you because we are way outside what will be the 80 degree arc for this speaker to cover. And, and like I said earlier, the very center is the loudest, but then as we move farther away off axis or off to the side, the speaker gets softer. So we can draw here a little bit less than a 90 degree angle, that gets us 80 degrees, and that gives us a rough estimate of where our speaker is going to cover. And so we wanna make sure everyone in our audience if we can't control the front to back level as much because we can't get our speakers higher or something like that, we can at least control the left to right coverage and that's what we're doing here. We have chosen an 80 degree speaker for this specific setup. We'll get into the math and specific reasons why here in a sec. Here are some principles for placing your mains. We'll get to subs a little bit later. And, and to be absolutely clear, me, mains are the, the, usually the left and right speaker. They're carrying the main portion of your segment in the concert. So you usually want them in line or a little bit in downstage or in front of the stage. So you can see here from our top down view, they're basically equal with the front, but I could cheat them up a little bit. Uh, we want to avoid common walkways, so I intentionally left a little bit of a path right here just in case someone wanted to step up and get on the stage. If you're a DJ and this is just your booth and no one's going to come bother you, then fantastic. You could have a little bit more freedom there. Uh, but we, bottom line, we want to make sure these are centered up with their zone. This is probably the most important concept you'll learn today. 
is that we have this big rectangle here and a single speaker cannot handle all this. It's not an 80 degree speaker is not wide enough to get here and it would try to, it would get here and shoot off and then shoot off if we put just one speaker in the middle, but all these people here on the sides would not get covered. So what we're gonna do is subdivide and conquer. So now let's divide the room in half. So let's only worry about this house, house left side right now. And you may be asking, well, what about stereo? Don't I need speakers overlapping? Most shows, I really don't worry about it. <laughs> and I, 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 uh, I'm probably gonna get some flack here, but I'd rather have clarity and coverage everywhere rather than trying to prioritize stereo. But that is just my approach. So as you can see here, I've got this speaker centered up here right in the middle, staring down the barrel of this zone. And this is intentional. So I've placed the speaker in the middle of its zone and I've also aimed it through the middle of the middle of the zone. I'll say that again. The speaker is placed in the middle of the zone and I'm aiming it to shoot through the middle of the zone. This is my starting point and most optimal placement. And you can see that in a second it's because if I draw our little rectangle again, I will solo this speaker. You can see here that specific zone is covered very well. And this is intentional uh, because I actually measured and designed this audience size to fit exactly with an 80 degree speaker. And you may ask, well, how, how are you doing that? So I'm using a calculation called FAR or forward aspect ratio. And that is here in my audio mass survival spreadsheet. Make sure and uh, snag that from the link below as a free resource. And so if, if you're not a math person, this is overwhelming. You can probably skip forward about 90 seconds, be right back on track, but I, I like this stuff. So the coverage angle of our speaker is 80 degrees. So it's a little bit less than 90. And that gives me an FAR of 1.56. So that's basically the, the depth divided by the width is equal to the room shape. Uh, so I could do the reverse of this calculation by putting in that depth and then the width. But you said, hey, my, Michael, my, our room depth was 76 feet. How come you're putting in 38? Well, if I have an FAR 0.79, I go lower and say, hey, here's my room FAR. I put that in. That doesn't compute. There is no speaker that is able, even if I go wider than 180 degrees, that is able to actually cover that space, it being that wide when very short and squatty. So let's subdivide and conquer. So if I divide 76 in half, that is 38 which gives me an FAR of 1.58. I put that into here, and it tells me, hey, I need at least a 79 degree speaker to adequately cover what's going on in this audience zone. And so I said, hey, I can divide this room in half. I got two speakers, and this 80 degree speaker is doing a perfect job of covering what's going on. We'll address this back area that's not as strong here in just a minute, but from a horizontal aiming perspective, that's what's happening. So you don't have to have 3D prediction software to make this all work. You could just literally walk up to the dance floor or the seats where your congregation is and, and have a speaker stand with you. And like, okay, here's, here's the middle of the room. Here's the chairs. I'm gonna walk in the middle of that, plop the speaker stand down and away you go. It's not rocket science, especially if you don't have like, well, let me choose the perfect speaker. Do I have a 90 degree speaker in the truck? Do I have a 60 degree speaker? Chances are you're stuck with a K-12. Just throw it on a stand, put it in the middle of the middle of that zone, it's zone coverage here, and point it through the middle of that. So what if I can't get my speakers perfectly placed in the middle of the middle? I have to put them out wide a little bit like this. They're farther away from the stage. So I've made this rectangle and drew my crosshairs again. As you can see, I've got the speaker tilted in a little bit. It's still aimed through the middle of the middle. This does not change. I can even prove to you here if I predict what's going on, these speakers are gonna cover this area just fine, even if they kick them out a little bit. So this rule still stands. Some people do like, if they're a, a DJ specifically, they want their speakers actually pretty close to them near the booth. And I would just do the inverse, have them close to you and then angled out a little bit to shoot through the middle of the middle of their zones. We're not having to worry about feedback as much if you, if you just have your laptop's output, right? So have them close to you so it feels like the sound is coming from you uh, and you can angle them out there. So let's move on to the vertical placement of our system. Here, I've got them about nine and a half feet in the air. You may ask, where'd you come up with that number? Or at least the center line is nine and a half feet. 
So that feels pretty high. I mean, that's almost as high as a basketball goal. You know, I can't dunk, but so I think that's pretty high. And so I would make sure and get nice and tall speaker stands to do this. There are some brands that have some, that, hey, here's a speaker stand. And even the graphic I showed at the beginning that just pulled from the internet had the K-12s real squatty seated on the speaker stands. And this is not where you want them. These are going to blast the people in the front row because the speaker's really close to them uh, versus being able to have them nice and high and distribute evenly. So the analogy I like to use is if you have a flashlight and you put it really close to the ground, that that light is going to be really bright for what's uh, right in front of it. But as you keep the flashlight at the same angle and you lift it up, it is going to distribute the light evenly more across the room. So I'm not saying put your, your speakers, you know, 30 feet on the ceiling at the front row, but if you're putting them on sticks, I almost always send them all the way up that I make sure and sandbag the bottom of the stands so they don't topple over and hurt anybody. Long story short, never buy short speaker stands and I would go with these K&M uh, tri by speaker stands because they list here that they can go up to 97 inches and that with some quick math is about eight feet. Uh, and then the speaker bottom up to where the tweeter is, I got to nine and a half. So that's what's going on in my file. So the higher, the better. Some speakers even have a little bit of uh, down tilt to them. They have two different holes they can put them in or you could twist this little guy and make him tilt down. And that's helpful too, because we want that, that, that energy to go down at our audience and not towards all the back wall. But this isn't a deal breaker because it's usually not that big of an angle. It's pretty simple for vertical placement, but let's say I have some VIPs that are sitting here right in the front, whoa, front row. These, this isn't a, this totally could be done with just these two, but if you really want some extra clarity for the front and to draw people's attention towards the center, I would add a little front fill. So a front fill is a little speaker that's sitting here right on top of my subs. We'll get to subs here in a little bit, but this is another reason why I like center sub setups. It's a nice little pedestal uh, to have my front fill speaker on. You're probably gonna have to turn this way down compared to the mains uh, to make up for the fact that it's not having to do a whole lot of work of just covering this little region, but it can help. And so if I predict what's, what's going on after this uh, with just this speaker, again, it's just taking care of the center. And this here, here's what it looks like with all the speakers. And we can see here that this area in the front is covered nicely so I can have someone right here dead center and get plenty of high frequencies so they can latch on to what's going on. All right, sub woofer time. Let's get rid of our front fill. And let's look at way down the basement at 63 Hertz, right in the middle of a lot of subs and see what that is going to look like. Here's this blob of low end coming out from the center and radiating, radiating out equally throughout our audience. It's not easy to put subs up on tripod stands. I would not try that at home. So either gonna be flown with like professional rigging, which is probably out of your show scope, uh, or they're gonna be right here on the ground. So I would start here centered. And you may ask Michael, why do you like them centered apart from them being a cute little stand for your front fills? And this is the main reason why I don't want power alleys and power valleys. So let me look at the exact same frequency, but all I've done is place these subs out far left and far right. And this creates these power alleys and valleys of this really strong area of energy shooting down the middle and shooting here. Then right here in the black part is this big cancellation. So if someone's right here in the audience, they're hardly hearing 63 Hertz on at all. And if someone's right here in the front row down the middle, they're getting pummeled with this. So this creates very uneven tonal balance with what's going on. So left, right subs give you that. Again, sometimes the, the, the promoter or just the real estate in the front row is really important. They don't want the subs down center. So it's not the end of the world, but if I had it my way, I usually like a center sub array. This is also more forgiving when you are inside because low end is bouncing off the walls and kind of reverberating around and fills in some of these gaps. But if I am outside, AKA no walls and no reverberation, a very tight sound, uh, I really, really try to advocate for a center sub setup. So we've talked about picking the right speaker, putting it in the right spot, aiming at the right place. Last is about levels. So most of the time you can set the input of your speakers to noon or unity and you're going to be in good shape because ultimately at your console or the output of your, your, your turntable, you're able to turn down the master output to what is appropriate for your show. The only time you might have to do some, some, some finagling with the system is if you added this front fill here 
uh, and you're going to want to turn it down compared to the mains. And so I would maybe start with something like 10 dB less and, and then go down more if you need to. But the goal is to make it feel equal across the audience. We talk about how this front to back disparity between the audience is a lot because what's happening is this person in the front row is only this far away from the speaker. And this person in the back row, the sound is traveling a lot farther. I would say that's maybe like a five or six X times the distance. So we can't fix physics, but just know that, you know, if someone's complaining about it's too loud um, at your service, ask them to sit in the back row. We can make this better and more even, but how to fix it is to get higher trim height or maybe move the stage back so the speakers can be farther away from the audience. There are fixes for this, but oftentimes it's just like the stage is where it's at. These are where the speakers are. They're on sticks. We can only send them nine or 10 feet in the air and good luck. So just be aware that it's going to be louder in the front. Just want to make sure you know what's going on there. And so as far as the mix position and how I would, where would I stand if I want to make the best decisions for what's going on is I would pick one side of the audience. So usually start with house left and then I would stand at this middle of the middle position. So if we got my crosshairs, this rectangle, I would stand right here. Uh, let's say I'm mix mixing on a digital console and have an iPad and be able to stand right there. I'm right in the middle of the speaker's throw. Um, I'm at the loudest point right there. I'm in the middle of the audience. So I'm not getting slammed in the front row. I'm not you know, getting a little bit lighter feel in the back. I'm right in the middle. So as you can tell, just remember the word middle <laughs> from this tutorial and you will be in good shape. All right, so let's land this plane and recap. Number one, use what you got because it's often going to work. You don't need to drop a ton of money. Go for a Honda Civic level speakers for the given situations I'm talking about. I love the QSC K12. Uh, but for another option, let's say you really didn't need a wider speaker, you can go with their CP8, which is a smaller, not as high SPL, but it's 90 degrees. So there are other options out there, not just QSC, but you don't need to break the bank to get quality sound at your event. Placement and aim after having the right speaker are your biggest wins. Can you get it in the middle and it, it have a shot at being able to, to throw at your audience at the right place? And then did you aim it right? Is it aimed through the middle of its particular zone? So don't forget to subdivide and conquer and aim through the middle of the middle. If you want to get super nerdy and pull up my spreadsheet and calculate the exact speaker you need and exactly where you put it, then go for it. And then number three is just be, be flexible when roadblocks do pop up. It's not the end of the world uh, to not get perfect coverage at your show, but by learning these principles, you can know which rules to bend or break if need be, uh, depending on what's going on. Because sometimes there's, there's nowhere you can put your speakers because of the camera shots need to look a specific way or catering needs to be somewhere or you're a speaker broke. So stuff's gonna pop up. Uh, so I want you to have these principles ingrained with you so you make good decisions even though you are dealt a bad hand. I, I thank you so much for hanging out with me. I hope this was helpful to you for eating your show. I would love to know below what was the most biggest aha moment for you. Uh, for a lot of people, I've been teaching this stuff. It's been the FAR and being able to calculate and know in advance what's going on. So if it's that, give me a thumbs up. If it was something else, please let me know. Uh, please make sure and grab the spreadsheet in my audio toolkit. It's at producedbymkc.com slash audio toolkit. I will see you next time and have a wonderful show.